Hi, I'm Glenn, and for Archaeology's Dirty Little Secrets, Unit 7's assignment, I'm going to create a video podcast of my own people, places, or things. Because I live in the area, I thought I'd come right down here, because right now, I am standing on one of northeastern North America's most significant archaeological finds of the last 10 years. It's called the Mantle Site. Let's go take a closer look. We're standing at the corner of Byers Pond Way and Mantle Avenue in Stouffville, Ontario. Stouffville is about 45 kilometers northeast of the city of Toronto, Ontario. Mantle Avenue was named after the owners of the farm that used to occupy this land before all these houses went in. Mantle is also the name associated to the archaeological site that they found while developing this land. In 2002, a complete Huron village was discovered on this site while the building of a nearby subdivision was underway. It was dated to be from pre-contact era, which means it was constructed before the coming of Europeans. Between 1500 and 1530 CE, it was expected that up to 2,000 occupants lived here. It's about 4.2 hectares in size. It's located next to the Stovall Creek, which is right behind you, which is a tributary of the West Duffins Creek. It was believed that the occupants of this site came from smaller nearby communities such as the Draper site, which is about five kilometers behind me in northern Pickering. When constructed, this community had three road palisades with 95 longhouses, of which up to 50 of them were occupied at any given time. They were about 20 feet wide, 20 feet high, and, and ranged anywhere from 40 feet to 100 feet long. They were constructed of maple and cedar and covered with cedar bark. The community also had a very well-established waste management system and open plazas within the Palisades. About 62% of the diet came from maize. That translates into one pound of corn per person per day, or 1,500 pounds of corn per day for everybody that lived here. Their farming region extended about five kilometers in every direction around here for a total of 80 square kilometers. To keep warm, 7,000 deer skins were needed per year. Their hunting area extended about 40 kilometers in every direction. Artifacts, ceramics, and pottery found on the site resemble those in northern New York State, which is to the south. It is believed that this community was one of the very few that linked Lake Ontario to the south, Lake Simcoe to the north, and its trade patterns in between. In the early 16th century, the inhabitants of the Mantle site got up and relocated five kilometers northwest of here to either the Ratcliffe site or the Aurora Old Fort site. In the 17th century, it is believed that they relocated even further north to join forces to form a Huron tribe in the Aurelia, Georgian Bay area. One of the most significant finds of the Mantle site was the discovery of a forged wrought iron axe that was discovered buried in a longhouse in the center of the community. Upon further research, it was found it was from a Basque whaling station from the Straits of Belle Isle in northern Newfoundland and Labrador. It was then traded into the interior 100 years before Europeans arrived in the Great Lakes area. It is the oldest known iron in the interior of North America's continent. With the discovery of the Mantle site in 2002, Archaeological Services Inc. of Toronto was commissioned to research the significance of the site. It was agreed upon that about 5% of the site will try to be maintained, mainly along the shores of the Stouffville Creek that we were at earlier. Over 150,000 artifacts were recovered from this site. They were researched at the University of Toronto and McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. They are now in the safekeeping of the Canadian Museum of Civilization in Ottawa. An ostuary of about 300 to 400 skeletal remains has yet to be found here. If you'd like more information about the Mantle Site here in Stouffville, you can check out the book The Mantle Site, An Archaeological History of the Huron-Wendat Community by Jennifer Birch and Ronald Williamson at your favorite online bookstore. Or you can check out a documentary that the History Channel aired last summer called The Curse of the Axe. Go to history.ca and I think they might still have a copy of it on their website. Thank you very much for watching.